dude, you and Nick are like texting each other back and forth going, we got to get Marcus to say something stupid. <clears throat> Insert. It's going to be bad, dude. Somebody's going to catch me probably picking my ass or flicking my balls around or something. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm Marcus. I'm Atrex. And I'm Nick. We are working class nerds. Cue the intro. That's right, we are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, November 2nd, 2023, and you can find this 221 podcast on all the podcasts that you can find in the galaxy far, far away. You can also find every single Working Class Nerds episode on YouTube. Just search for the Working Class Nerds podcast or... Go to youtube.com slash at working class nerds, click on playlist, click on working class nerds, and boom! All of the episodes, past and present, are right there, right at your fingertips, ready for you to enjoy. You can watch me multi stream video games Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at kick.com slash marcusb814, twitch.com, twitch.tv slash marcusb814, and youtube.com slash at working class nerds. You can also watch me play video games Friday night at 9.30 Eastern PM, that is, twitch.tv slash A underscore A track. And you can watch me play video games on select Monday nights at twitch.tv slash NickVern51. And when we mean select, it's when TK427 selects the Monday of the month to allow him to play. But you can also find us on all the social medias. I am at MarcusB814. I am at Atrax underscore A. And I am Nick. At Nick Vern, that's N I C K V R, and in this week's episode, we are entering the multi stream. We'll be streaming live on as many platforms as we can, all at the same time. It's a regular orgy of streaming services. Oh my god. <laughs> So tonight we're starting with Twitch and Kick because there's some sort of technical difficulty with uh, the getting the YouTube at the same time. But Marcus will be doing that regularly uh, for his streams, and we'd like to do that for the podcast as much as we can as well. Oh, <laughs> Wait, what the, where is this Discord we are not soundboard? You, do not tell Nick. Do not tell Nick where you that just, is. You just Chat. answered your own question, dude. It's a Discord sound soundboard. You can find it. You're a smart fella. Sometimes. Okay. Uh, be- I got a pop up that says "Take me to the soundboard." <laughs> Thank you. There you go. So, yes. anyways, everybody, while uh, while Nick is starting to play with the soundboard, he's going to completely fuck the, fuck up this entire podcast. No, I just I want not. you guys to know that. I wonder if the Riverside will pick up those sounds. I mean, I heard I'm it. Sure. sure did. We all heard it, yeah. Oh. If I can hear it, the only audio I'm getting from you is through Riverside. Oh, so. yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so anyways, it. back to what I was saying. Yeah. Working class nerds, uh, we're doing a little switcheroo uh, for everybody that didn't hear it in the pre-show, and you're listening to it just in your car on your terrible ride to work. Uh, we're switching up the podcast a little bit. We're still going to talk about what we do, a little less, but we're definitely going to be diving into a topic every week in the Discord, which has been cleaned up. Underneath the podcast tab, we have something called uh, podcast topic suggestions or just topic suggestions. We ask you guys to go in the go in there, shoot us a topic, and if we pick that topic... If we pick your topic once a month, we're going to pick a winner, and you're going to pick a you're going to win yourself a working class nerd sticker or something of the sort to be determined. Um, so if we end up picking your topic for that week, we'll put your names in a hat, and then at the end of the month, we will send you guys a nice little working class nerds uh, prize. Also, to uh, make your working class questions if they're topic based. We're guaranteed to answer them, but depending on time, um, if we can answer them and they're off topic, we sure will. And last thing, Sweet Angel 51, what have you been up to this week? Well, (laughs) it's funny you should ask. Well, now I have to include that portion of things. All right. Dude, that was the best thing I woke up to all day. (laughs) 
Okay. Wait a minute. I sent that at like nine o'clock in the morning. What do you mean you woke up to it? Well, like th- that was the first time I first thing. I, that's when I opened up Snapchat for the first time. Oh, all right. Well, whatever. So, what uh, this all starts? We're going way back in the time machine to Saturday night. Uh, Saturday night, I was staying over at TK four two seven's house. Duh. And I had to. I was going to paintball the next morning, uh, but that was going to be in New Hampshire, which is about a three hour drive, which is I was not looking forward to. But I was working. I was. I'm gonna. I was gonna carpool with one of my teammates, Jacob, aka Gronk eighty seven. Uh, shout out to Jacob. And I was organizing the trunk of my car with all my gear because he would have to put his gear in there. Well, to do that, it was dark, so I couldn't see well in the trunk. So I used my phone's flashlight, and I put it up on, like, the lip of the roof with the flashlight hanging off the edge so that, you know, it could it could light up the trunk. Well, I finished doing what I was doing. It's, like, 8.30 at night. I'm like, oh, good. I'm done. I can go to bed. I got to leave here at, like, five five in the morning or something like that. And so I closed the trunk and I didn't take my phone out and I didn't realize I didn't realize that I hadn't taken my phone out of there until I heard and felt the crunch and smash and tick, 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 trickle of broken glass for my phone, like completely getting destroyed and like bent in half at a 45 degree angle. Rip that guy. Yeah. Wah, wah. Now I have an I have iCloud set up so it, my phone backs up every day and I have like two terabytes of storage in the iCloud. So like. I never run out. It's never even close to running out, but it still sucked because I couldn't really like. It's hard to just get a new phone when you, like the phones are locked to a carrier. So well, like, aren't they like nine hundred dollars? New? Well, yes, but I'm saying like immediately get a new phone. Well, this one was fourteen hundred, but um, <laughs> but well, my 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 one I smashed was two, and I had one more payment left. I went to get a new one uh, through my carrier, and I could, and it was like, oh, you got to pay off your balance first, and it was only thirty bucks. I'm like, I had one payment till it was free, but whatever. Uh, they, so yeah, phone is smashed Saturday night. I'm like, okay, cool. I have so I have Spectrum Mobile, which uses Verizon's towers, but it's way cheaper. That's so why we use that. So if you don't know this, your a lot of phone carriers like AT and T, Verizon, whatever, they like there's software in here that only lets you use that network on the yeah. phone so like you have to get them to unlock it and like send a signal up to unlock it the phone and then you can you can put in your sim card for whatever other thing and, and then activate it that way but the problem is like i didn't have a verizon phone for free tk427 had a spare for her old phone but that was on at&t and that wasn't going to help me before i had to leave for new hampshire so i drive i, I did have a my old iphone x so it's a much older phone but it would have worked. The GPS would have worked. Is what I was really what I was looking for. So I go to drive forty five minutes with TK four two seven up to my apartment and grab the iPhone X and it won't turn on. And I'm like, oh okay. Well, maybe it just needs to charge. It's been sitting in a drawer for like a year plus. Why not? Let me just charge it. So I'm charging it. Nothing's happening. I'm charging some more. Nothing's happening. I'm like okay. I and I've eventually realized that phone's just dead. Also, it's like completely toast. So <laughs> I ended up just straight up not having a phone the next day, like zero phone. Cause there's just like not, it's eight o'clock at night. I need to leave at five in the morning. Like this is like, it's midnight at this point. I, I'm back at TK oh, 427s. That's and, all I can think about. What? Oh my God. <laughs> that's a good one. Well, anyways, I'm getting, I'm getting to it. So I go to New, New Hampshire with no phone, pick up me. Thankfully I knew how to get to where I need, I was meeting Jacob. And uh, which is and, shocking because Nick is the l- most del- directionally challenged person I've ever met in my life. Well, he was he gave me a landmark that I was very familiar with because the, the parking ride is right across the street. Well, the, what's the landmark? <laughs> the Electric Blue Cafe in Coventry, Connecticut. <laughs> oh, the titty bar. <laughs> yes, that is. In a, uh <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen's Club establishment. No, I'm just kidding. It's the it's the it's the um, exit for Yukon. So like, I knew how to get it's there. It's the titty bar. Don't let them fool you. <laughs> That's how you would get to Yukon, though. But um, exit 68 on 84. But uh, but anyways, that was not fun. Going to New Hampshire and back without a phone was terrible. Because like, it's it's one thing to like, you know, 
listen to someone else's music for the ride, but when it's like not your phone either, you can't like do anything with it. That sucks. So I ended up getting a, I ordered the phone Saturday night, but stuff doesn't get processed on the weekend. So it didn't actually ship till Monday and it was two day shipping. So I actually finally got my phone yesterday. And when I opened and (laughs) you wouldn't believe how many things are tied to two factor authentication. So like I tried to order like stuff for my phone through Amazon and I couldn't get into my Amazon account on either of my computers because it's like, oh, let me just, let's just verify that it's you. And we're going to send this code to your phone number. Well, I can't access that phone number. So I never got the code. <laughs> yep. So I had to wait to until yesterday to PayPal, order like my case Steam. and oh. yeah, to order my case and everything. Everything's two factor authentication. All my stuff for work, all my stuff for my classes is all two factor. Thankfully the work and classes stuff I could um I could like I contacted IT and and all all both IT departments helped me work get a workaround for it, but um but yeah, it was a mess. And then, so I get my phone case. Fine. This brings to this brings us back to the sweet angel fifty one thing. I go order this phone case with with like screen protectors off of Amazon, and it's it comes with like a letter. It's clearly from China. So like you know the the English translation there is not great. But the letter starts with "Hey sweet angel" or like "Thank you sweet angel for your purchase." Blah blah blah. Our phones are awesome. Thank you. You're the best. Blah blah blah. It's like this weird letter thing. So, like, I took a Snapchat of that, said it to, you know, the working class nerds and Rayu. And Rayu goes, well, you know what that means, right? Your name is now Sweet Angel forever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's true. I'm like, ah, crap. So, yeah, I changed my name in the in, on Discord to Sweet, Sweet Angel 51 just to, to play along with the joke. And that's what Marcus was referencing in the intro. But in fun news, and I'm wrapping it up quickly, I had a lot of things happen this week. Monday, despite... You know what didn't need two factor authentication was my checkout by PayPal checkout because Monday night Boston Paintball, aka committed paintball, um drop had their twister drop for L V twos and Planet Eclipse L V twos and Planet Eclipse C S threes. Those are high, high end paintball guns that are custom milled and have some custom internals that make them shoot even better than that stock. And they're about Three hundred plus dollars more than the regular retail price, but the resale is like double that on sometimes. So, yeah, it's a big purchase. I bought it through my PayPal cre- line of credit, which is zero percent interest for six months. I figured I get to shoot a really cool paintball gun for a little bit, and then I can sell it and actually make money. And all the while, I had a fun experience with the gun. I would, just, also an I would just let it. I would just. I would just not shoot it. Keep it brand new and let it f- and bang somebody. Oh, like oh, like really pay have pay yeah. Like for you it. guys want it for sale? Midnight black black, three thousand bucks. Yeah, don't laugh. 30, the, CS, the CS threes will probably go for three grand. I would sell mine yours for three grand, brand new, three Gs all day, yeah. thirty five hundred, and watch yeah. watch people be like, dude, you're ripping people off. I'm here to make money, bro. Yeah, you want a black yeah. on black. Well, I don't. Mm-hmm. I didn't get the black on black. I got black with red accents, but so you got a death trooper. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, they didn't have. I couldn't click fast enough. I wanted to see us three, but I couldn't click fast enough. For reference, there's 400 guns released just right now. 200 of the LV twos and 200 of the CS threes. Those are models of guns, obviously. Um, and there was like five or six thousand people trying to click at the same time quickly to, to well, buy them well the other thing too is nick you could also see if somebody that has a cs3 wants to trade for a lv2 yeah but probably not you never know dude some people probably wanted the lv2 and yeah but you it. could get you could get an lv2 like no problem oh. like the cs3s went in like under five seconds or something oh all every color even the ugly like green ones and- excuse me <laughs> what'd you just say you Did both you just like green. Well, at that point, and green in the same sentence. Well, and yeah. at that point too, the 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 colors. Like if you click a gun, you just click on anyone. Yeah, if it's that fast, that's what a lot of people did. You know, because they had a they had a pre sale where I guess last Black Friday, you could have you could pay I don't know how much, probably a couple hundred dollars to have like an uh, early access pass with some package through Committed Paintball, and it was the early access pass was for next year. So for this year, so people got let in 30 minutes ahead of time and all of, for example, the solid colors are the most popular, like the all black, the all silver, you know, all gold, all, all, all black and all red are the, the fastest selling ones. 
But um, those were gone before the public release at nine o'clock. So at like a half hour, eight thirty was the early access, and then nine o'clock was the public. So like all of the solid colors were gone before uh, before nine o'clock, and then at nine o'clock that's when the public got let in. But but yeah, it was pretty sweet. Uh, I'm really pumped about it. I'm Dude, hoping, I'm gonna be hoping. interested to see you shoot an LV too. They're nice. Credit where credit is due. They are very nice. I'm not usually an LV guy. I I don't usually like a poppet valve. Although I did really like my Bob Long Vice way back in the day. I've been looking at getting a G6R, but now that I have this LV2, I'm not going to do that. But but yeah, it's pretty awesome. But that's it for me. That's my week. Mostly broken phone chaos has been terrible. And then now I just got it like back together yesterday. Finally, like yesterday, like at dinner time, like all my stuff finished downloading and everything. <sighs> but uh, any poor, poor sweet angel. Oh my god, Marcus or Atrax? What do you want to go f- first? You want to end with game of the month news, or do you want to start with game of the month news? I think we end with game of the month. Let's really mix it up tonight. All right. So, Marcus, how's it going? What have you been up to? So I talked earlier about the working class nerds changes. It's excited stuff, exciting stuff. Um, if you're in the Discord, which you should be, um, we're hoping we can get enough boosts to be able to get a custom URL. Uh, but we cleaned up the Discord to really focus on the podcast. And we have a lot of stuff going on in that's been shifted around the uh, Discord, which I think it's really been a good change and it's really been clean. So check out the Discord. It's awesome. Now... Uh, I'll let you guys decide. Should we talk drama or the good game? I think I th- you always start with bad news, but and I think we should end with the drama though, because oh, okay, I think we could easily spend the most time on the drama. All right, so well, actually, no. So let's talk Counter Strike Two. So a couple weeks ago, you know, I I've said for a while, and I always say, oh, I'm gonna play that game. Yeah, like honestly, I'm gonna play the game. Yeah, honestly, oh, yeah, I'm gonna play. Oh, it. Yeah, 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 I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, play. yeah. Atrex, don't worry, I'll, I'll play it. I know, I know, I've got the game. It's fine. I, I downloaded it. It's fine. I, I'll play it. It's cool. For for a hundred episodes, I've been listening to Atrex say that. And this is the first time I've seen him do it live where he's actually rolling his eyes, eyes closed, and like he's like flailing around <laughs> like a fucking seal in the ocean. Wait so a minute. You I, haven't I, seen you've you don't have our cameras up every week. Every week we have our cameras on. Yeah. And you just don't pay attention to the cameras? Clearly not. Nope. He just stares at his phone and then criticizes me for doing that. Well, no, I, yeah. it was my kid's school. So oh. it was like a text from my school just reminding us this picture day tomorrow. But like, I thought it was like, hey, school's closed tomorrow. Fuck you. Oh. Which would be sweet because I would call out anyways. <laughs> um, so I, 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 a couple weeks ago, I had, um, I don't remember what night it was. I played, um, I played some CS2 and I didn't want to get into like their, I'm gonna their ranked style matches, even though it's casual. I yeah. just wanted to play the game, and there's something called deathmatch where it's basically like Rumble and Destiny, or like I don't know what it's called in um, all all for one in Call of Duty. What's free the for every, all? free for all? Free yeah. for all. That's it. Sorry. So, what's cool about the game is they every time you spawn, you get a different gun. So it allows you to play with all these different guns. Some of them are absolute ass and trash, but some of them really good. But I just play with them all because I feel like the more you play with all the guns, you get to kind of experience experience how each one shoots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for, for reference, you can turn that off and p- pick a specific gun, but like it's the default setting is just give you a random gun. I also and I kind of like that. Mode. Right. Yeah. So um, if you play the first Counter-Strike game, CSGO, whatever the fuck it was, that's like that's like you're playing Minecraft, a Minecraft first-person shooter. That's how terrible the gameplay was oh, because dude. it was very blocky. Like, everything was, like, super-duper precise. The, f- the movement wasn't fluid at all. Um, In the first Counter-Strike, you had to buy bullets. What? Yep. Well, whatever CSGO is, that's the first one I played. Right. So I'm the just point saying it's changed a lot. Yeah. Times. So the point I'm trying to make here is that um, the new version of the game is super smooth. It definitely looks better. Like it looks like it's a game from 20, like 
18. Um, the water's crystal clear. They've really done a good job. But the one thing that I like about it is you can pray and spray like 5% total. Where in the other game, it was like, you can't pray and spray. Like it was like negative 200%. Like this game is actually giving you 5% of pray and spray. So like you can be walking a little bit and be able to kill something. So for me, I find that I'm enjoying this game. So I played a bunch of Deathmatch. Then the next day, it was, I think it was a non select Monday, or maybe it was a select Monday. And I played more. And I'm, I, and like, I'm really enjoying the game. Then, uh, I don't know when it was. Uh, Atrax and I did this thing called Wingman. And it's two versus two ranked. It was fucking okay. like, it's round based, of course. And like, <laughs> yes, we did not win a match all due to me but but like it was fun to be able to experiment with smoke grenades and like molotov cocktails and like oh they're gonna be they have two ways they can come and get you let's block off one of the walkways by throwing a molotov so then we can have our route to go the other way and yeah it's like like, for you to defend right and we didn't get our ass kicked by any means like the scores were like i think one score was like eight to eight to five another one was seven to three like we got our butts kicked but like we were still in the hunt you know what i mean yeah yeah and for the record just so everybody knows a tracks did carry me but there were a few points where i actually did work like i did get a kill you know what I'm saying? Like, but yep. Atrax yeah. is the pro here. Um, but what I like about that mode is it's still quick because there's only two people to get killed. And the mechanic of it is, hey, and you can plant the bomb and still get points. You know what I mean? You won't get the win if they kill you both, but like you'll get more money for your next purchase. So there's there's really cool aspects of it. And believe it or not, That wingman mode got me even more prepared for the actual casual, the ranked style matches. The thing about the ranked style matches is as soon as I got in there, I was getting destroyed instantly. Like, so I would be one of the first, like the first two people dead. And then you're literally sitting there for three minutes waiting for the match to be over that part I don't enjoy, but I think once I get a little bit better at the game, uh, it'll actually, it, it'll be better. But I'm telling everybody, I really like CS2. Um, it's a def- it's different than any other first-person shooter. I'm done with Call of Duty. You know, I hear people talk about it, and I'm just like, nah. It's basically the same game as I've been playing since 2008, and I'm just, whatever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I get you. Um, so, yeah. So, please, if you can, um, download Counter-Strike 2 this Saturday, which you will hear this probably if you hear this before the weekend. Um, you should. No, no. Well, if they decide to listen to it, some people may oh. not listen to it on Monday. This Saturday night, I am actually streaming Star Wars The Old Republic. Um and I am going to start the night off by playing PvP with Chimeri. Nice. Which I haven't played a video game with Chimeri in forever. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And then after that, I'm going to be doing a raid uh, with hopefully Doritos and Cheese and Wolf and a bunch of people. I want to do Gods from the Machine. So I'm really like looking forward to getting back into SWOTOR a little bit. I haven't played it in a long time. So I just... I feel like it's time. And the reason why I'm really branching out of games is Destiny 2 and Sony were businesses this week. So they lay. <laughs> 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 yep. Um, he was waiting for that. So yeah, was. that was eight tracks, by the way. Yep, I don't know how to 100% use it. 100% that was me. I did find the Discord soundbar, but I don't or soundboard, but I don't see any like cool sounds. So oh, it's because like, you're not in any cool Discords. Yeah, yeah, you got to join some Discords, bro. Well, I mean, I have some, but not like 
Yeah, but they have to. Anyway, so <laughs> what I was saying, everybody, is um, so this week, Bungie laid off 8% of the Destiny staff. They lost 45% of uh, projected income wow. for the game. The reason why is because when they released Witch Queen, everybody bought it. Everybody loved it. In my opinion, that is the best expansion that they ever came out with. Um, and maybe it's because that was really the only one that I was ever really a part of. So when they announced Lightfall, I pre-ordered it right away. Everybody I know pre-ordered it right away. They're like, this is a banger just like it. And Lightfall was terrible. Yeah. It was like a... It was like somebody gave you a battle royale and they said 160 players were going to launch in the map is 100 miles by 100 miles. But then when you land, the it's one mile by one mile and there's five people on the map. Oof. Yeah, that's, that's what Lightfall was. People can say they loved it or enjoyed it. It wasn't... It was like 10% or 15% of what Witch Queen was. And for me... Like, Witch Queen was an unbelievable expansion. All the content that they gave. But, so then all these things happened, and they laid off 8% of their employees, which about a, about 100 people lost their job, which I understand business. Hey, sometimes you got to cut cut the fat, right? Yeah. Yep. If you're paying too much and you can't afford it, you got to cut some people. It's really unfortunate. I feel really bad. But where I am really heated is... Inst- Bungie is a b- billions worth billions and billions of dollars, like three point six nine billion dollars, and they fired slash laid off people at the end of the month, one day before their stock options turned, so they'd start turning a profit by having Bungie stock in Sony stock. A, but what really got me is the way their uh, layoff program was written. Some of the people that got laid off lost their health insurance right away because it was the end of the month. Instead of just laying them off on the first of the fucking month and saying, hey, we're g- it's- to get your life together, you guys have health insurance for one month. Next month, you got to figure it out, which your COBRA insurance would kick in. No, they were like, hey, fuck off. You got two days. Go fuck yourself. So if like somebody has like, prescriptions or having a kid you just got boned in the butt by Bungie and sony for that yeah for and sure. if everybody knows me like i care about that because health insurance without a job costs 15 to two thousand fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month for a family yeah let me repeat that fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month for health insurance for a family without a business contributing right and Bungie basically told these underpaid game devs who kill themselves every day creating games, hey, go fuck yourself, buddy. Worry about your own health insurance. Yeah. And you can tell me it's business. That is dirty dog business to me. I get yep. layoffs. So what I've decided, like, for the foreseeable future, I am not raiding in Destiny. I will be hosting Clan Night on Tuesday nights, but that will be the only time I log into the game during the week for a little while to cool off because again, I feel really bad for those employees. Not that they got laid off, that they lost their health insurance. Like getting laid off is just business. And like I've, I've gotten laid off from a job and it sucks. And I've, and I've laid people off. So like, I get that part. If you're not cutting weight or you make too much money and the company needs to cut, Hey, Nick makes $75,000 a year and he makes the most in the shop. Snip, 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 yeah. snip. See you later, Nick. Hello, Atrax. That I'm paying eight dollars an hour because he's new. You know what I mean? That sounds like slavery, but with extra steps. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so that's me. I uh, thank you, everybody. Atrax, what is up? And I cannot wait. Like I don't even know what the game of the month is this month. So, oh, I don't either. I'm excited for it. <gasps> Everybody's just, excited, but you're ready. gonna have to wait. Oh, Nick cheated. I know Nick something cheated. you don't he know. looked at the show notes. Oh, my goodness. I did do that. Wait. I found the soundboard. He found the soundboard, but he has the lame Discord default sounds. Uh, I have some other funky ones. I'm just kidding. 
Oh, oh my oh, God. Come sorry. Come on, Nick. Okay. It's the same thing. You know, I, it's you the know, same thing I do in the other one. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we did. What Discords you are you guys this? in that you have those? That was a that was a DJ good Discord I'm in. Yeah. We've got some I uh, I've got some pretty good ones. I have a ton actually. I got to add some to our nerds community one. There's no sounds in the nerds community one. I got a lot of sounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um, funny. Wow. Actually, oh that's a good one. We need a Marcus honestly. <laughs> From Monty oh, Python. We're having awesome. way too much fun with the soundboard. Hell yeah. Anyway, All right. Sorry. You know what I'm not having wait, wait, fun wait, with? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. He's going to play another soundboard sound, isn't he? Go right There ahead. it is. So this month, my WoW subscription ran out, and I'm not renewing it. <laughs> And you get mad at me for that. <laughs> All right. oh, man. Wait, did you say you canceled so, it? I didn't cancel. Well, okay, technically, yes, I canceled it. I just, I didn't renew it. So, like, you know, my sub time ran out, and I'm not going to buy more sub time. I didn't have it on auto renewal. I purchased it in chunks. So I'm Smart. not purchasing it. Uh, I just, I've been playing a lot of other games and been having fun with those games. And WoW doesn't have a whole lot of new exciting stuff. Retail is, it, it I enjoy it kind of, but there's just way too much to do. It's, it's way too complicated. It's very catered to people who just play it all the time. Like that's their only game. And I know that MMOs are by design like that, but. I've played just, a lot of other MMOs that didn't require that much for me to just keep up. Yeah. You know, like, I understand you want to play all the time to get to end game content and, like, do all that stuff. But for me, I, I didn't even get close to that in WoW. Like, getting through the story zones and stuff, it just it took way too much time. But Atrax, you're also the definition of a variety gamer. So, yeah, like... That too. You don't play a game to hit max level. You play a game to enjoy the game, and then if you hit max level in the process, great. But you're going to play the game until you're, all right, I've had enough, and then you're going to move on to the next game. Like, on average, every night, out of a normal weekly night, how many different games do you play in one night? Uh, probably two or three, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So there's people that, like you're saying about WoW, who play it, only right but speaking of wow i wanted to talk to you about this because i actually saw it in the notes did you know that they're making a wow classic expansion that has never been released so yeah that's what that's what i was gonna say is blizzcon is coming up and they're coming up with i don't know something wow classic plus or supposedly there's something that's coming out and the rumors are kind of mostly negative but also at the same time, you never know. Um, Blizzard has been under fire a lot lately for their games, like Overwatch Two and Diablo Four, being from Not great. like objectively giant catastrophes. I think Overwatch Two is the most negatively reviewed game on Steam right now, still. Yeah. So you know, it's kind of like people are really things are not looking good. People are pretty skeptical, but. You never know. I think their mobile game recently just dropped too, so I don't know. It's just kind of eh, until something more interesting comes along in specifically regards to WoW. Like, I played Wrath Classic for a while. I played WoW Classic for a while. I got to level 60. Like, I reached max level, but then I didn't really have a raid team that worked with my time schedule, so I just, I was like, alright. I don't play PvP, so that's it. I'm I'm kind of done. Uh, if something good comes at BlizzCon, then who knows? Maybe I'll switch back to it. I know a lot of people in the community really enjoy it. I'm still going to follow it because I like the game. I like the art style. I like the play style. Right now, uh, r recently this week, what just ended was a $100,000 Mach Garah tournament for Hardcore WoW. So these players entered a 1v1 PvP tournament. It was hosted by OTK. Uh, Asmund Gold covered it as well. 
Mm -hmm. And basically, these people had 30 days to gear up for one v one a one v one tournament. And I believe after the first round, the like in the in the playoff stage, death is permanent, like in hardcore WoW. So wow. all these players, like the literally the last player standing, was the one who won the tournament and won. Their, I think it was like fifty grand, and then the um, the winners for each class got like six grand or something like that. So you know you didn't necessarily have to win to get money. You could just place really really high but still it was that's fucking rad dude it was awesome it's like 10 hours of asmin gold vods at least i was watching quite a bit of it i'm gonna try and make it to the very end between uh like now and this weekend i'm gonna try and finish it i'm about two and a half hours into the last like stage asmin gold's video is like five hours uh so it's it's been super fun to watch and like i said the stakes are really high because these people played for like a month it's literally a month's worth of time and your character is dead like they're gone, gone. like so d e d yeah dead. like deleted so but that, was that super cool. is see that to me is an awesome one-on-one -on -one tournament you know right. what i'm saying like that yeah. to me like if you're if you like that style of like hey i'm gonna create a character i'm gonna give it my all for a month and if I win, cool. If I win money, great. But if my, I lose my character, it was a cool experience being a part of it. And the fact that the last person standing out of thousands or hundreds of people that entered, out of all those people, there's only one person that still has a character. That's pretty rad. Yeah. And it was. it's also cool. Like, Blizzard allowed it to happen. Like, it couldn't have happened without Blizzard. So they were also involved, which is, like, a win for them, despite all of their negative, Well, you know. Blizzard Press, needs some attention now that they're owned by Microsoft. Yeah. You know, you should just say Microsoft from now on. It's no longer Blizzard. Microsoft Blizzard Activision. But here's something I just want to say. So Microsoft owns Blizzard. And, th and this might be another topic for another day. Okay. What if they put WoW on the Game Pass? I think it's too complicated for controller. No, no, no. Oh, you PC. just mean like you get a sub PC to Game WoW Pass. If you have yeah, Game you pay Pass. fifteen bucks a month to Game Pass, you get sub to WoW. I I think that what they'll do is they'll make a special Game Pass edition if they did that, like a WoW Game Pass that would be twenty bucks, and you get WoW plus Game Pass Ultimate. Okay, sure. You know. But Let's talk about how much, how many but, people would come back to the game if the sub for the game essentially was five dollars. Oh, I would have a permanent sub to WoW if that was the case. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Absolutely. <laughs> for I think that'd be great. We touched on it a little bit. Uh, moving on, because I'm kind of done with WoW. I don't know about you, gentlemen. If you have any oh yeah. Comments. Well, but, uh, I've been done. Counter Strike Two. We talked about a little bit just today. As I got on after work, there is a update, three gig update. Now you have workshop maps, so map creators and all of their friends can have fun with making maps again, custom maps. Which means that now we'll see like co-op missions, and you know, with the AI bots and stuff like that, we'll see competitive maps we'll see warm-up maps all sorts of fun stuff 1v1 maps that you can use to warm up with your friends um all of that good stuff now finally coming back so counter-strike 2 still receiving updates uh even though people the scene the esports scene and the like professional scene is really rough right now people are not happy with the state of the game yeah i know marcus for you like you mentioned coming in as a beginner you feel like you can run and gun and stuff like <clears> that to a lot of players to like pretty much the whole player base that's kind of a big issue is the yeah. peaker's advantage it's a little bit too far askew the other way uh kind of needs to be dialed back just a little bit at least in terms of the professional play and like the competitive i think is... they made it more casual for people i think they they said hey we're updating this game let's get a bigger player base let's make it a little more barrier of entry and let's make it like x and right. look at people like me are like wow i fucking love this game right now like yeah. this could be my next fps game like it's 
It's right. just good. But of course, listen, I don't care. All the fucking pros, everybody, when you play, I'm going to use me as an example. When you play SWOTOR for fucking years and years and they change major things, you're pissed off. Yep. It, it's just inevitable. It just People don't like change. Right. Yeah. I hate change. Me too. Right. That's why I put it all in a mason jar. Mm. That's why I throw it at people. You know, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, see, Nick doesn't like change, but make it hail. <laughs> Instead of rain, it's hail. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, oh, what man. you're saying? You're, I know you. I I heard the tone of your voice uh, that you were searching for a joke there. No, no, I had it. I just Atrax was talking. Oh. I was like, you don't like change, but you smash your phone in a fucking trunk. So you had to get a new phone. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. That was an accident. <laughs> it's not like I smashed. <laughs> what no, is that even not. from? That's from Swole George. Star Bet you Wars. didn't see that coming. Some crazy Jedi that turned bad. Okay. Well, uh, anyways. And hey, just for the record, I actually love okay. that I'm not looking at chat at all. Like, they're probably there destroying me, but it's great. Yeah, we've got a couple of bless your hearts from Doritos in there. Oh, good. Yeah. And some yeah, great got, jokes I've from Mordecai that, up. that right. I actually want to, like, sit down and read. So, so. I got it. Is it Game of the Month time, dude? I'm, like, shaking waiting for Game of the Month here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're actually going to talk about last month's Game of the Month, uh, Dota 2, really, really quickly. I'll go through it. Um, thank you, by the way, to everybody who showed up for the watch parties over the course of last month. Really appreciate it. I'm going to try and do more like community related watch parties, whether it's uh, a esports event or something, you know, just media that we are entertained by or something. I don't know. There's a plethora of content out there, but uh, especially game of the month related. Try to just get people more involved. So thank you to everybody who showed up for the Dota 2 International Watch Parties. It was a blast. I had a great time for my first Dota 2 event. And we started the Working Class Nerds Dota 2 Guild because you can just make a guild if you're a Dota Plus subscriber. Oh, yeah. And I made the Working Class Nerds Guild. We got Rayu in there. We got a couple other people that I knew. And last night I was playing some Dota 2 and some random people joined we partied up because we played a game and didn't rage at each other and we're like hey we're all beginners this is going to be fun and after the first game that we played as a team i was like hey want to join the guild because you can get you know guild points and stuff there's contracts that you can do and all of that cool stuff lo and behold now i think our guild is like eight or ten members something like that we got a bunch of new people in there contracts are being completed and we got a bunch of new nerds. So if you're interested, Dota 2, free to play. It was last month's game of the month. Come join us. And it's a lot of fun. The guild is growing. Ooh, and ooh. now we have made it to game of the month. It... Oh. <laughs> uh, what is that from? That's fantastic. That's a good one. That's funny. All right. Wow. Anyway, in game of the month news, the game of the month for November 2023 is. <laughs> Albion Online. Boom, 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 dun, 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 boom. Dun, dun, dun. Albion Online is dun, dun, a man. kind of free-to-play sandbox MMO RPG. Uh, our good friend of the show, SM Playboy, got me invested into it just a little bit. It's kind of like New World mixed with RuneScape is like the vibe that I get from it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I've been farming materials like a madman. Chopping down wood, Chopping. skinning animals, collecting, you know, cotton and hemp and flax. And uh, did I say mining minerals already? And chopping mm. trees? Because chopping, chopping trees is definitely my favorite thing to do. 
Murray. I actually in New World, I love chopping trees. Oh man, it was so great. New World, New World is really great for chopping trees too. Rayu's been playing a lot of that, but yeah, with his wife. Oh, oh, can yeah, I do a sidebar right. real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Why are you asking? Well, whatever. Anyway, um, so today I took my son. We stopped at a GameStop and I got Super Mario Wonder. Oh, nice. Okay. The new Mario game. Because my wife loves Mario. My wife is not a gamer. She plays like, she's not a gamer. But when there's a new Mario that's a side scrolling Mario, like. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen any of that, but I heard it's. Burro, it is fantastic. Like, I just, we, I just played it for fucking two hours. And then here she comes and like dominates. And I'm like, the fuck? How are you so good at this game? I'm terrible. I, do. I wonder if TK four two seven would like Mario. Who doesn't? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I know. I like I like Mario, but I'm terrible at it. But, so like so I always like get frustrated and I'm like, ah, forget it. You know what I mean? But yeah. um I'm uh Atrax in the game of the month channel, can you link the Steam link for Albion online for me? Yes, I absolutely I will. can. All right, I'll download that. So I will try it. it. What? What does? I'm sorry, Mario does. I've just oh, looked up the trailer. Yeah. It's a gameplay trailer. That's okay. So I described it as a kind of free-to-play because it kind of is in the sense that... Is it free to try? No, everything you can... Everything you do, like you can play free-to-play, but the premium members who play pay for a sub get like extra resources and xp that's so it's what kind of like, eso does right so it's like you know every plant that ever every tree that you chop down you get three logs per swing and then if you're a premium member then you have a chance to get bonus logs like you always get at least one bonus log but then there's a chance to get more and it's the same with like xp gains and stuff like that dude i love I've, bonus logs they're I, so good Oh, dude, right? Super mega awesome bonus logs. <laughs> oh, oh, man, already. good times here. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, so the, <laughs> there we go. I posted it in the uh, the game of the month section there. That Thank I'll be you. Online. And can we just say one thing? SM Playboy is fucking fantastic. Oh, that yeah. dude is an awesome guy. I think he says the F word more in one hour than I do in a week. Okay. But his content is wonderful. Dude, he has a rap for me. Like, he, he has a rap for me, point, Channel Point Redeem. Yeah. And he was like, oh, man, Atrex, you're here. I redeemed it. And he was like, all right, well, hold on a second. I got a song. And he was, like, scrolling through looking for one. He's like, hold on. I sent him a beat, and he freestyled over the beat that I sent him. And my respect for him, like, increased. By- and it was it was fire, too, dude. Like, it was <laughs> it was good, man. Yeah, it, if you guys don't know SM Playboy, go to twitch.tv slash SM Playboy, P-L-A-Y-B-O-I. So... SM Playboy, I've been, I'm on the East Coast, in the game, I'm on like the East Coast, and he's it's more because it's the me. best coast. It's because you're uh, fantasizing about living over here. I, I picked the, the forested side. I, yeah. I don't know. I just picked the East. It looks... This is the region you're looking for. Well, I'm actually regretting <laughs> it because tree prices are lower over there. I could have gone on the West Coast and got more money, but, you know, that's okay. Say Levy. These things happen. Anyway, um, so I've been in contact with him about, because I've just been like mad farming materials. I've got stacks on stacks. So I've been in contact with him about caravanning my insane amount of goods over to his side of the map. Because basically, you know, there's no fast travel. There, There is fast travel, but... Your luggage costs money to, like, take with you, or you can just run it yourself. But, of course, there's weight because it's an MMO, right. so you kind of have to manage it. Now you can get—I have, I think, the Tier 5 Ox, so my—which is, like, the big, you know, like, storage mount, 
which yep. increases your carrying capacity by, by a ton. So I have that mount, so I can go fast and far with a lot of goods, but it would cost, if you were to fast travel with that amount of goods, it costs like an in, it, almost as much as the goods are worth by just selling them on the market or buying them on the market. Right. So it's kind of like, hey, I can make you a ton of money by, you know, I can sell the the goods to you at wholesale and like travel them over there because the market costs an insane amount of tax for all of this stuff. And instead of the tax, you just pay me a delivery fee and then I can just fast travel back because now I don't have my goods anymore, you know? So it's, it's just kind of a fun sandbox MMO thing. Like I said, there's, it's a lot of grinding, like an MMO, you know, kind of is designed but I'm having a ton of fun. I'm trying to get enough money to where I can get the Working Class Nerds Guild officially in. And that is my goal for the month, to get the Working Class Nerds Guild in the game of the month, which is Albion Online. You can also, forgot to mention this, it is a cross-platform, meaning you can play it on your PC, but you can also play it on your phone. It's a mobile game. It's like, it's not... When I say, oh, you can play it on your phone, immediately people, oh, really? Like, oh, it's a mobile game? Honestly? Like, honestly? It's it's really good. Does the phone version have autoplay? Like, what do you mean autoplay? Like, some of the MMOs that are on phones have autoplay, where, like, you'll uh, like you'll set it to auto, and oh. it'll just pull, no. run through Mm-mm. and level you until you get to a boss, and then you'll actually have to fight the boss. No, this is, okay. this is not like that at all. And a majority of this... So, like, the areas in the, in the MMO are, like, or in Albion are separated by tiers. So you have, like, tier one up until tier seven. And... I believe tier five is a yellow zone, which is like non-death PVP. So if you're in a yellow zone, you can get knocked down, but it doesn't kill you. It just you get it back up again. Yeah, you get back up again, but your armor loses some durability. Then in red zones, you die and you lose your gear and like the stuff that's on you. And in black zones, it's like you, you really like you lose everything. I What's so what funny, the difference Mick? between red and black zone is, but I'm laughing at the chat. I'll tell you the break. Oh, okay, but yeah, it's uh, it's a really great game. Like I said, free to play. Give it a try. If you like it, you can join us. Join us. Like I said, my goal is you have to pay like nine hundred thousand silver in order to get a guild, and it's another million for your island. Let me ask you a question though. It. You start creating all these guilds, that's a lot of guilds to manage. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I like it. Some of them, plus, some of them won't work. Like, not all the guilds are going to work. But we got to at least try. We got to get the working class nerd's name out there. Plus, you never know which member of the community wants to (laughs) step up and take control of a game of the month guild. Especially if they enjoy it. Or which members of the community wants to step up and send some really interesting and unique um, emotes in the chat. Emotes, exactly. <laughs> and suggest game of the month. If you want to find, a, if you want a game of the month, particular game for game of the month, throw it in the suggestion box. And we will certainly take it under t- consideration. Awesome. Albion Online, November 2023 game of the month. Go play it. And with that, Shake and bake? Is that what you said it was? Uh, oh, my God. Um, Marcus, do we have any AIE news? Uh, we're going to do it a little different this week. Uh, AIE was founded, I don't even know how many years ago. It was a long time ago. One it, billion. Not really. Yeah, In one billion years away. ago. Yep. Yeah. Um, AIE is a family-friendly, wholesome com- gaming community. We have thousands of members. So many games. There's, I don't know, I think we counted up before, like 13 main gaming divisions it might have grown since then, but, you know, every week we talk about all the stuff we do, but when I say we do something every night in that game, in the guild, we do, or it's not even a guild, it's community of games. Um, so all I can say is if you're looking for a wholesome group of people to play with, 
that is family friendly when you're in the Discord, so you don't have to worry about your kids like hearing my potty mouth like I do on the podcast. It's a really wholesome place to be. Every night there's something going on in all the games. So I'm telling you, AIE is the place to be. And if all this sounds fun to you, go to AIE-Guild.org. What? I was thanking you for doing that. Oh, I was waiting for the throw. Well, anyways, let's just let's just bring it back. If all this fun sounds fun to you, go to AIE-Guild.org. Get our Discord information in the top right-hand corner of the website and ask for a guild invite. Whether or not you play Star Wars Old Republic, Destiny 2, Guild of Wars 2, Albion Online, World, World of Warcraft, Warcraft any of the other games. Lotro. Starfield. ESO. Uh, CS2. Rocket League. Or any... Or Google. any other game that we play, uh, we would love to have you. So normally this is where Nick would still have to go pee, which he does have to go pee. But right. this time we're going to stay live. And you get to hear all of the stuff we say on the break that gets cut out of the show. So you guys know Nick is going to leave. But he, anyway. has, he has to call TK427 and check in. because Wait, if don't he does she's it, watching the stream. She can see. She's not here. You know what's even funnier? We're taking a brick, so a, a brick, a break, so Nick can pee. But yeah, he even went before the show. I did, and then I drank a beer and a liquid IV and some water. So we'll be right back. My God, what is taking him so goddamn long? Nick, hurry up, man! It's all that beer you're drinking. Come on, bro. Rose the four homes, man. And we're back. So today we're talking about the big, big changes. The colossal changes. I was looking for some alliteration, and I did not find it in Twitch. Uh, big changes came to Twitch, and Marcus wants to tell us all about them. So you the, could have said there's a multitude of changes at Twitch. Damn it! I know. Just <laughs> bring it back. I'm just kidding. Um. So, so TwitchCon was a couple of weeks ago, and during their keynote or whatever, they made some announcements. Um. One of them has been a big problem with Twitch as a whole of a platform. I think they were afraid to uh, lose streamers. But what they're realizing is, believe it or not, Twitch does have the best app, the best stream for as when you're a broadcaster, Twitch is definitely the best space for it. YouTube is the best space for making videos TikTok owns the shorts, right? That's okay. just the, 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 it's been made. But the problem with Twitch is they've always been very like, you're my streamer and, or my broadcaster and you're never going to be able to allowed anywhere else. But this past week, they announced that you are now allowed to multi-stream to other platforms. So whether you're an affiliate, you're a partner, you have the green light for them to do it. There's some caveats behind it, but I'm just going to read uh, a little excerpt from this. It says Twitch will now allow streamers simultaneously to simultaneously stream on any service they want. It's a big change that you that mean you'll see more Twitch streamers on other platforms. That's just basically the heading. Um, Twitch will now let its creator simultaneously stream across uh, live streaming services. The company announced on Friday last week as a part of a big batch of new uh, news from TwitchCon. Previously, streamers could only simulcast on mobile platforms like TikTok and Instagram. But as of Friday, Twitch has significantly broadened where streamers can continue uh, go basically go live. Simultaneously go live. Yeah. yeah. So the big thing right now for me, so I am a kick streamer. I am in kick. That is my home. Um, I am going to multi stream because I want to give it a whirl. Um, but now, as soon as I can figure out the YouTube thing, because Nick, myself, and Atrax all share the YouTube account, I think when they log into the account, it automatically signs me out of my Streamlabs. Um, so that is a little bit of a hiccup because you guys are, you know what I mean? So when you upload a video to the YouTube or whatever, or you're oh. just using the nerds community thing, it happens. So, 
Um, the big thing that happened, and I think this is two streamers that I'm really um, – or three. So Nick Merckx, Amaranth, and XQC signed big, big, big contracts with Kick. Yeah. And I think losing them hurt Kick uh, – hurt Twitch some. Now, granted, Twitch is a Amazon company. So they're a giant corporation that says, hey, Twitch, you have $50 million you can use a year to pay whoever you want. Or I know it's the budget's a lot bigger than that, but that's all the money you're getting. And Harris Heller actually had the C- CEO of Twitch on his stream. And he asked him some hard questions about, like, why don't they pay 70-30? And it basically comes down to money and I actually heard some really interesting facts. So if you're an affiliate out there that's really upset that you're not a partner, stop. So there's 7 million users, 7 or 9 million users on Twitch. No, it's 9 million users on Twitch, 7 million broadcasters. Less than 1 million of them are affiliates. Okay. <clears throat> And obviously less way, way, way up at the tippity top. If you make partner like that's that's an achievement, but you should really hold your head high. So the big thing with uh, Twitch doing that, it allows the multi streaming is allowing people to be able to be seen on multiple platforms, which if you stream on kick Twitch and YouTube, you have a chance for three different platforms to see you doing content. Out of the three, just a streamer, you're you're probably not going to make partner on YouTube just from live streaming. Right. But it's a place to be visualized and like seen and be able to grow in other places. What were you going to say, Nick? Uh, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot more users than you gave him credit for. I just pulled up a stat site, streamcharts.com, and it says... Uh, there are 63,612 total partners out of the, you said 9 million and change? Mm-hmm. This says there's 2.2 million total affiliates, and then without any status is 15 million people. Okay, so... so it well, might even be higher, but that's probably counting all accounts. There might be dead accounts and stuff, but... Right, so all I know is what the CEO said. He said there yeah. was less than 1 million affiliates. Maybe that's active? Yeah, but that could be, that sounds about right. You know what I mean? Yeah, Who knows? Like but either way. So I was just uh, trying to illustrate it's a really tiny percentage of partners. That's all. Right. Um, yeah. So if you have a partner, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty epic. Yeah. Pretty epic. So the next thing is with multi-streaming. And I know we have some questions. I just want to first say this. I'm not saying I'm going to do it forever, but I'm giving it a try to see how it is. What are both of your thoughts on the whole Twitch saying, hey, let's stream everywhere, and what are your thoughts on multi-streaming? Well, I think Twitch is, from a business standpoint, they're thinking like, okay, we would rather keep, like, people are going to watch somebody, right? Like, I'll just use Nick Merckx for, as, as an example. Like, uh, granted, he just signed an exclusive contract with Twi- with Kick, but... No, it's not exclusive. Oh. Kick's well, contracts are not exclusive. They don't oh. care where else you stream. Well, that's cool. No, but I think that policy is a good idea because they're, the fact that that person's on their platform at all will bring viewers to that platform and let people decide, oh, I like this one better. you know. And so Twitch knows that they have the best app and everything, so they say, okay, we would rather you, you know, not lose you entirely and let you stream on our platform and elsewhere than lose... Like we're gonna lose some revenue, but it's not gonna be a lot as much. It's we're gonna keep a lot of it because our app and our infrastructure is the best, and it's the most established currently. If I had to guess, that's their where their the business decision comes from. You know. Yeah, they're kind of forced to because like the idea is, oh well, every other platform lets you except for Twitch. So right. instead of just exclude every other platform, we'll just exclude the one, even though it's the most popular. Like, that's kind of the opinion of people now. So Twitch is kind of forced to just be like, well, yeah, all right, guys, whatever. Stream wherever you, can, you want, you know. Yeah. Like, 
unless yeah. you already have an exclusivity deal, which I understand why someone would sign that. You know, like it's it's the same with networks on like you know cable TV back in yeah. the old days. Makes sense. Yeah, I'm. What I'll say is, I think with Kick coming, I think Twitch lost money. I'm not. They might not have lost a lot. I don't know. Well, they definitely did. Well, There's they no definitely did. Oh, yeah. And I think they the hand was forced. And of course, there's caveats that are coming with this change where they're like, you can't tell people in your stream that this is like you mainly stream on kick or wherever your platform is. You don't need to mention it. Like there's some terms of service rules, which whatever. Yeah. Um, But I think overall, like just tonight. Uh, Chet, our community manager for the New York Nerds community, he said that he's in the Twitch chat just because he prefers the Twitch app over the Kick. Right. Something about the Kick app that I didn't realize that you can't, you can only gift a sub from a mobile device on Kick. No, you from cannot. No, you cannot regular sub from your mobile device. And most streams oh, yeah. are watched from a phone. Well, yeah. Mobile device. Yeah, I don't know why you can't subscribe to somebody's channel. Somebody said that like some streamers get it, some people don't. And I'm like, that can't be. That's an app problem. Right. That's bizarre. Maybe they're figuring out the back end of it to try to have like the two buttons. Yeah, that's weird. You know, I don't know. That feels like a da- like a I don't know, a core feature that you would have ironed out before you launched the app, you know? Right. Well, I think I think here's what it is. It's I'm going to compare World of Warcraft and SWOTOR right now. Okay. World of Warcraft came out in 2004. SWOTOR came out in 2011. Okay? Mm-hmm. When when SWOTOR came out, it was supposed to be the World of Warcraft killer. It was... It was at the early stages of the game, and they didn't work out all their kinks. So people are like, this game sucks, but... World of Warcraft had eight years to figure out their bugs or seven years to figure out all the bullshit to get their game to a solid place. And Star Wars is just coming out. Same thing with Kick. Kick is in the beginning stages. You know what I mean? And for me now, it is a big deal for me now that Kick is, you know, here. I like it personally. Um, I just like that they give you all the emotes. You can do whatever, you know, essentially do whatever you want with your stream. And and their revenue for a small creator, or, or I'm a mini creator, they pay out on, like, I've made more money on Kick in the months that I've done it than I did on Twitch in almost a year. Wow. Well, there you go. So. Um, but, I, my opinion, I think competition's always good. Yep. You know, the the more competition, the better, personally. I think it just generates, like, the that's the, the more competition there is, the better the, like, products and experiences end up being for the consumer. The less competition there is, it, it the, the scale starts to slide towards the business. Right. Um, let me ask you guys a question before we dive into some of these questions. Um are you would you guys be interested in multi streaming? Like to put content on different platforms? Would you when you stream on your select Mondays when TK four two seven allows you to, would you stream on multiple platforms? Yeah. Why not? I mean I, I don't have it set up, but I wouldn't what it doesn't make any difference to me. Sure. Prob- I'd imagine it's tricky to keep track of two chats though, no? Um, I think somebody asked me that. Asked. Like, how does that work? I thought somebody said that in one of the questions, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, well, I'll answer that now. So, Kick currently is working with Streamlabs right now to get integrated. Once it's integrated, I'll be able to have the multi-stream chat where everything will be in one. Right now, I'm watching two. 
Yeah. Instead of watching two, I'm not I'm not a giant creator, so the it's not like the chat is going fucking bananas. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I don't really have to follow it that much. Like everybody talks to me. Um I know people when people stream onto Twi- like um I've seen people stream on TikTok and they're streaming on Twitch or Kick or whatever and they just say like, Hey, I don't read the TikTok chat. So yeah. Like, yeah. I don't I, I I'm not that big. If if I all of a sudden I grew as a broadcaster I would personally, I would tell everybody, if you want to chat, I'm in the kick chat. Yeah, it makes sense. You know what I mean? Or I shut the chat off in Twitch. Right. And just have a screen on the bottom chat is on kick. Or just tell people. Yeah. But that probably breaks the terms of service for Twitch. I would guess. Uh, I'm not sure. So I'm not, that becomes more complicated, but go ahead. Atrax, what do you, what do you think about multi streaming? Well, you kind of have to at this point if you want to like grow as a content creator. The I was looking at the numbers. I can. You're on, really low. Sorry, I'm probably not talking directly into the microphone. No, you um, aren't. That's better. There we go. So you kind of have to at this point if you want to grow as a content creator because, like, just looking at the numbers. The active streamers daily for last month for Twitch for October is like a a million one hundred thousand, right? Around there. And the average viewership for the same month is 2.4 million. So on Twitch, basically it's just kind of like there's no viewership if you think about it. Like if you really think about the numbers, because the top 1% has a majority of the viewership. So you're kind of fighting for almost nothing. You're hoping to kind of get a raid. So you really like, you kind of have to multi-stream if you want, like at least from my perspective, if you want to grow, you kind of have to, to get out there as much as possible because like it's so there's just it's so oversaturated like the idea ideally you would want at least like you know four times as many viewers as streamers because the viewers are the ones that are going to be paying right like you don't want a ton of streamers and no viewers that's that's kind of the opposite at least i don't know maybe i'm completely wrong but that's how i would imagine it you would want your viewership base to be a lot larger than your streamer base and right now it's kind of like one to two, which I don't know. I'm not liking those odds, you know? Yeah. So I clicked on a game. I don't know what game this is. It was the first one that was suggested. It's called The Finals. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's the play test. Oh, okay. That, so uh, that Goldie was talking about. Oh, it's just a beta. It's not the actual game. Not yet. Okay. So that game. There was there's thirteen thousand viewers. Sixty eight of them have ze- are streaming to zero viewers. Okay. And I'm they, maybe they just started stream, but what I'm saying is, out of the thirteen thousand viewers, you know, there's uh, sixty eight broadcasters that are streaming to nobody, but the top streamer had thousands of people watching. Right. Yeah, one point seven k, one k, a thousand, a thousand. So four thousand of those thirteen thousand are just taken away by the first four creators. So all those people at the bottom are literally just hoping for a raid, or like some people to, or somebody to in. find them and just say, "Hey, yeah, yep." Mm-hmm. But how yep. many, but I want to know, like, I would imagine that the ratio of those viewers that actively search out for new channels is super low. Like it's, oh yeah, it's like what streamers that are looking <clears throat> for other streamers to do stuff with maybe, mm-hmm. you know, like, I don't know the, it still doesn't disol- solve a lot of the problems in my mind on Twitch, but it does help the creators out a bit. Like all the people on the bottom, basically who can now get their content out there more. And like YouTube, right. now you have live VODs that are just automatically posted to YouTube, and those can always pop off. And one feeds into the other, right? So I imagine Twitch is probably hoping that 
by enabling multi-streaming that some of the people who are on other platforms that are not yet on Twitch, like on YouTube, I imagine YouTube is a big one where like people are on YouTube but not necessarily Twitch, then it could certainly bring in those new customers. You know, like it is kind of a roundabout way for Twitch to gain new viewership as well. Yeah, like that makes sense. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I think ultimately this is good for 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 anybody who makes or enjoys streaming content. You know, uh, it's it just opens up. It lets it gives more power to the consumer because it lets you if if your favorite streamer streaming, you know, uh, it'll be a multi stream on all these different platforms. It let it lets you watch on whatever platform you prefer. Right. You know? It's like what well, having having you know not having multi-streaming be allowed is almost like making you... It'd be like if Netflix said, hey, you can only watch Netflix on Roku devices. Like, you can only watch... You have to, If you want to watch Netflix, you got to go through Roku or something like that. Right. Where it's like, if you want to go watch your favorite content, you have to go to this platform. Even if, you're, even if you have... What if you have an Amazon Fire Stick at home and that's what all your TVs are connected to? You're just SOL. You know well, what I mean? If you don't like Twitch and you prefer right. Kick, then you know you're you're out of luck. But this way, you can watch it on whatever you want. You know. Well, that's why I tell everybody: if you're a brand, a new creator or something, it's really hard to break out. Right? I feel like when you first start streaming, you're really motivated to meet new people and get involved in a lot of different communities and that is your highest growth but once you're done it for a while you kind of get set in your ways and like do you like how often do you guys go to the twitch directory and pick somebody that you don't know to watch rather than somebody you already follow never exactly yeah so that is the point where but if you go to kick and kick has just started you may only know me on kick and you're like, hey, I want to watch somebody play CS2. Next thing you know, you meet Johnny Rockets 413 that is, uh, uh, you're like, hey, I'm going to watch this stream while I'm watching Marcus. Holy shit, this streamer's great. Like, I enjoy this. Click the follow. And now you have somebody new to watch that's not on Twitch, and you're going to grow your Kick community that way. Yeah, it's true. And what I found about Kick is Kick is very the people on Kick are very motivated to help you because it's in the beginning stage. Where in Twitch everybody is everybody is willing to help everybody, but people that have been doing it for a while, they're really set in their ways. Yeah. All right, let's get into these working class questions because a lot of them have to do with the multi stream. Yes, indeed. It's time for Working Class Questions. It's Working Class Questions. All right, Marcus. Our first question comes from... Sophie. And they ask... I fucking hate that noise. (laughs) Um, Have you watched the Harris Heller video about the new Twitch stuff? Yes. So I'm going to tell you... A lot of people are mixed feelings on Harris Heller. Like, I don't think you take everything he says because, like, he made a tragic mistake and he's owned it where he's like, multi streaming is bad. Just focus on one platform. And I do agree with him on part of it. I agree that if you're trying to really grow in a community, you should play one game and one game only. Pick one live service game, whether it's SWOTOR, World of Warcraft, Counter-Strike, whatever it is, pick that one game and only play that game because you want to surround yourself and build your community around that one game. After that, you can start branching out, but that's really the growth. But Harris Heller has helped me so much with audio, mixers, like stream ideas like things to crisp up your stuff like there's so many things that he helps with in my opinion he's probably the best content um inform like news center out of for me like 
Like where Asmund <laughs> Gold is the best content creator, in my opinion. Like he's above all for okay. me. Um, I don't know what it is about the guy. I just fucking love his videos. And I think it's his because editors. he does it. Huh? His editors. Well, and if you watch his streams, like, he just doesn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. he's not politically correct. He's not an asshole. He speaks from the heart, and it's who he is. You know what I mean? He's not worried about any of that bullshit. But, yes, I have. Um, Harris Heller gave up his partnership. He committed to YouTube for a year and he came out and said hey I made a mistake I shouldn't have done it I lost $10,000 a month by switching to YouTube wow and when a guy can do that when he's got a young daughter and a family like that's ballsy but he also created the biggest music platform royalty free on the internet with stream beats okay hmm what do you mean? Mm. I like NCS better. Well, but it's the most played uh, royalty-free content you can get with different genres. There's like 30 different genres of music. Okay. But you got to hand it to him. Uh, Sophie also asks, also, did he he did a live stream interview, which is up on YouTube soon. Uh, with the CEO of Twitch, how are you supposed to advertise the multi-stream without saying the other stuff on your description? I think um, you're going to advertise by when I'll, I'll give an example. If I'm we're, if I'm multi-streaming and Nick comes into my stream and he's on Twitch and he follows, I'm going to say thank you so much for the follow on Twitch. If A-Tracks comes in and I'm like, oh, my God, thank you so much for the follow on kick, you know, and it's just going to be a new mindset instead of just saying thank you for the follow. You're going to make sure you say thank you for the follow what platform they're on. What? Also, streamers have been saying, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Like forever. they've been yeah. linking all of their different socials forever. I'm sure they'll just have chat bots and stuff that say. Well, that was the other thing is I'm just going to make commands, exclamation point, kick, exclamation point, Twitch. Yeah. Exclamation, exclamation point, point, live YouTube. stream. And it gives right. you all the links. You yeah, know, that's like, even yeah. better. Yeah. Mind blown, right? Yeah. You just do whatever. That makes sense. Yep. Uh, Rayu asks, do you think multi-streaming will change the landscape of Twitch? I uh, def- I would say so. Yeah. Why or why not? I'm not sure. If you um, think about it, multi-streaming, exactly the, but... the topic multi-streaming already has. Twitch used to not, and then it became such an issue that now you can. So it, in right. a way, it already has changed Twitch. Well, I came back. I was not right, going to is. stream on Twitch anymore. I right. love Kick. It, it, you know, uh, somebody actually said it to me. I won't call their bullshit out, but they were like, "I just think it's funny how you quit Kick. I mean, quit Twitch, and now you're back." And I'm like, "Well, you're not back though. It's not like you took your affiliate status back, right? I, I did not take my affiliate status, and I don't think I will. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um." But I do, I I can understand what they're saying, but I left the platform because of the freedom and the size of kick, which I loved for me coming back to Twitch is only to grow the podcast and connect all the dots. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, Atrex, who's our next question from? The Nerds Community Manager. That's right. It's Joey Feta, a.k.a. Frozen Cheddar. Now that you've completed a multi-stream, how was it? Is it difficult to interact with the different chats simultaneously? I liked it a lot. Um, it So the one thing I will say that was awesome is there's a lot of faces that showed up to the stream that I haven't seen in a while because they don't go to kick. And I remember somebody followed me on Twitch and I said, Hey man, come follow me on kick. And they're like, I don't do kick. And I'm like, well, that's unfortunate because it's an awesome platform, but I respect that. But thank you for the follow here. Yeah, there you go. But 
if what about the chats though? Not yet. So if both chats are going a million miles an hour, like I'll use Chimeri as an example. Like sometimes his chat's going crazy. It would be really hard to keep up with both. But my chat doesn't go bananas like that. I can I've always been able to keep up with my chat. But if it ever gets to a point where I can't, well then maybe uh you know. Yeah, I guess maybe it. not. Our next question comes from me. Yes, it's A underscore A tracks. And I have to a- know, Marcus, because I don't have this insider information. I've been dying to know. Are right. chickens and waffles also included in the Marcus multi stream media package? Uh it is. So I am currently <laughs> so because Kick allows so many stuff, I'm actually hired a guy to make a dancing waffle. Nice. To go with the dancing chicken. Um, Perfect. Yeah, so I am I'm pretty excited for all that. Uh and shout out to Goldie. He made some pretty cool uh he made a division two chicken, which I have to give Nick as well. Seriously? Says, yeah, it's a chicken and he's holding up a banner that says division two. Hell and yeah, let's there's, go. Ooh. And there's one that says like how I have the rip that guy. He had one made that says Munter, which is pretty funny. But Perfect. like Kick gives you a lot of uh emote slots. So um Yes, the chicken and waffles are pretty much ing- ingrained in my content now. As much as I fucking hate chickens, I don't know why you all love it, but I uh, whatever. Anyways. You're welcome. Sophie uh, asks, uh, did you have fun with the multi-stream, and did you broadcast, or did you use a third party to broadcast the stream? I kind of already answered this. Um the th- only third party I, I use is Streamlabs OBS because it makes it easy. Yeah. I, I, I'm too much of a coward to switch to regular OBS because I've invested so much time into Streamlabs. I'm almost married to it now, and I don't want to make the switch because Streamlabs right. makes it really easy. But I will say the one thing that I miss about Streamlabs with being integrated with Twitch and not kick is giveaways. I miss giving away merch. Yeah. Giveaways I like literally do. There's nothing um nothing better than that. Yeah. I'll take the next one. Uh Mei Lung Mal says, not a question, but a shameless plug of sorts. So tomorrow, um on November third, yep. um twitch.com Lotro Lord, if you go to the Lord of the Rings stream from 7 to 8... Lord of the Rings p- online stream. Yes, Lord of the Rings online stream. So it's the actual dev stream. So Lord of the Rings, the game, not the individual streamer. You just go to the game and find the the studio's Twitch channel. Uh, Mal is going to be streaming for one hour from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern for their Extra Life Marathon stream. And this his hour is dedicated to the Children's Miracle Network hospitals, and this one is for Boston's Children's. So awesome. his hour is dedicated to Boston Children's. So if you have a couple minutes, and even if you don't donate to the chat, please do us a favor here at the Nerds Community. Pop into a stream tomorrow night between 7 and 8 p.m. YouTube, put it on your calendars. You're not putting it on your calendars. Put it on your calendars. It's on my calendar. I'm telling everybody. Oh. Anyway, uh, do me a favor and go into his chat and type in chicken and waffles, and he'll make sure he gives us a big shout out to the nerds community. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Here and Extra go. Life is one of the charities that actually gives like 88% of the money to the, the charities. Yeah. yeah, they're not only giving 1% of the money like some of the scumbag charities out there. Right. Um, he will be playing Lord of the Rings Online, and he'll be doing giveaways for Lord of the Rings Online. I think he said he's going to be giving away like game time and like mu- like like I'm going to call it cartel money or auction house stuff. It's it's a really good cause. Go check out Mal tomorrow, uh, November third, twenty twenty three, seven to eight p.m. Eastern over on the Locho channel. And our next question comes from Dorita. Oh, 
Doritos. Uh, Doritos asks, uh, with multi-streaming, can you adequately play a game and focus on two chats? I can't play a game adequately and focus on one chat. Right. I'm actually, between me and you guys, um, I'm really excited for A-Tracks. I hope tomorrow he multi-streams. I don't know if he's going to or not, but I hope it's coming soon um, because I really want to get his thought on it and see his growth and see how like it affects him moving forward. Yeah. Our next question from Doritos asks, will mods be split between both services or is that an administrative function for the community manager to handle? That is a really good question. Um, I think as I do it more, I probably will ask the mods to be in separate places. You know, say, hey, I really want one person in Twitch and one person in Kick. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that makes um, sense. But <clears throat> again... Some, some lifeguards on both ends of the pool, you know? Right, exactly. I, but again, I'm such a small creator that, you know, we generally police ourselves. The chat helps, the mods help a lot. Um, But as we grow, I'm sure, yes, we'll need... We'll need uh, people on both sides of the thing. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Doritos also asks, <clears throat> how many how many bags of post-Halloween candy did you buy? I think he's talking about stocking up for, on the, the candy sales. A terrible zero. Uh, yeah, I didn't buy any either. I'm not a big candy guy. Fourteen. Oh my god! Dang. <laughs> you want me to tell you why? Yeah, go ahead. My kids' stockings. Oh, oh, smart. So I got packages like the big packages of Reese's peanut butter cups, Kit Kats, and Hershey bar, and something else. The big bags. They were uh, the the day of Halloween. They were thirteen dollars a piece. I got them for four dollars a bag. Nice. And wow. like the bags of like the Reese's eggs, but they're shaped as pumpkins. Dude, those that markup were, is so insane. Yeah, they were seven dollars. I got them for two dollars a piece, two dollars and forty cents. So I bought fourteen bags. Sweet. And it's not like I don't really care, but it makes my life easier uh, down the road. And when when they open the stockings, hey, I got a pumpkin. They're not going to care, right? They're going to eat yeah. it. Is it okay? Doritos' next question was actually, is it okay to use Halloween candy as stocking filler candy at Christmas? The answer yes. is yes, it is. hundred percent. Yes, indeed. And uh, even when they, even when they're grown and they don't believe, they're, I'm just going to look at them. What do you think? I'm rich? Right. Like, mm. we got the Halloween sale. Oh, do, you, do, do we have time for a sidebar? <laughs> well, yes. Do we? A, okay. We always do. All right. So... I, I'm in a predicament, you guys. Okay. My son <clears throat> wants for Christmas, and he's only asking one thing. Oh, boy. And it's, like, impossible. No. PS5. Oh. Okay. But I'm an Xbox guy, guys. <laughs> uh, That's because, and, and, you, it's because and, of the Spider-Man games, huh? Yes. But here's the problem. The problem is, is I have an Xbox Series S, and I'm going to tell you, like, Xbox and PlayStation, or I don't know PlayStation, but Xbox has not come to, like, Steam level, where they don't do sales like Steam. You know what I mean? Everything yeah. is always full price. It's a ripoff. And I, I took my son to the GameStop today, and they had the bargain bin, where if they're $10 or less... You get four games for 10 bucks. Okay. So I got WWE 2K20. I got the Avengers Square Enix game, which I did want to play. Um, I got Just Dance 2020 for my daughter. And what was the fourth game? Oh, Madden 23. I got those four games, or 22, Madden 22. I got those four games for 10 bucks. That's sweet. You know what I mean? But, like, you don't get that on digital sales. No. You know what I mean? And that kid walking out of that store with the bag in his hand, he was so fucking happy. Oh, like, yeah. And I'm That's like, That's the best yeah. feeling. Yes. Yep. And we came home and we gained. That's the best. That's the best feeling. Yes. Yep. 
So, oh, yeah. So for me, part of me wants to get a PS5. Um, Do it. But I fucking hate the PlayStation controller. But the question, that wasn't if, should I get it for him? Is a five-year-old too young for a PS5? Ooh. I... <sighs> Right. How That's does, a good how point. How does he? How does he do with the Xbox controllers? Well, he has a. He has. So I stole Nick's uh, PlayStation Four. Yeah. So we play that, and we use the Xbox. Oh, he can use the controller. He's an animal. He can play no, Mario. It's not a matter of no, using it, it. It's, it's a matter throwing. of how how long do controllers last? Forever. He's five. He's not okay. throwing them. Well, okay, dude, yeah, that was the question, I, dude. I don't know. I've seen some five-year-olds that break oh, a yeah, bunch of like tons of controllers. Like, yeah, dude. I'm, I'm, oh, I just guess destruction machines. Um, <laughs> I mean, like to get him his first game console. I don't know. My grandpa built me a PC when I was that like little toddler age, so I can't say that it's like, you know, an outrageous thing. Yeah. So, I guess uh, for me, it's more of like. Is that a six-year-old gift or a seven-year-old gift rather than a five-year-old? Um, I mean, I, it's, it's hard. hard to I, say. It's hard for me to answer without like knowing what the he's like. His brain is like. Like, is he going to comprehend? Could he play Spider-Man on his own and like actually he does get now. some of it? Okay, like well, he then... doesn't do the missions because he like right. Like he swings around the city and just beats people up. But that's right. what I do in GTA, and I'm forty. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know. That's a tough... I, I get what you're saying. I mean, eventually, you would get him the PS5. So, I don't know, like, if it's a big deal for now versus later type of thing, you know? Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't. don't have that answer. You know who would be a good person to ask is uh, Dr. Gameology. No, it's more of... Not his mental, like, he can play the games and he'll enjoy oh. it. Okay. But that's like a gift that keeps giving, right? Yeah. Or do I get like just new PS4 games? See, honestly, honestly, yeah, but they don't make new PS4 games. Not right. all of them come out no, on PS4. No. Like the, the Spider-Man Two does not. Right. Like it came out. Like the PS5 got released over three years ago now. Right. Well, here's the thing. But I kind of want a Series X. Because here's hear me out why. If okay. I get him a Series X and I get the and I have the uh P- Game Pass Ultimate, it spreads to the Xbox. Yeah, I I've been contemplating getting like an Xbox Series S. You can have mine if I a PC. Yeah, yeah, you can do both. It's cause, yeah, just but, cause, so I can play Starfield on the Xbox and like just pick up where I left off on just the take. Stage. You know what you should try, Nick? Is you should take my Xbox and try and see if it works. Good. I know it works. Yeah. Oh, because it just runs on the S like series. Yeah, so it's not going to look as good, but I don't really care. No, you're sitting on your couch six six feet away or eight no, feet away. It's, it's, no, in my bed. That's the real game changer. Oh, I I also don't see like to the counterpoint like because we've only been talking about the one side i also feel like there's nothing wrong with being like hey buddy you're a little too young maybe next year or the year after you know what i mean like that's all like teaching a kid to wait is also kind of a good thing so that's true yeah. you never like if you I, feel he's probably a little too young then just go you know like there's nothing wrong with waiting till next year he'll be okay oh no no he it's not about Nick's. that it's just it's just more of like me that's all he talks about. Mm, yeah. I like, guess it's hard and, for me to weigh in because I'm not a parent. Like, I don't right. know how to parent things. Well, for me, I, I, I so part <laughs> I mean, of I me. I know, but I can't say. I right, but like part of me yeah. is like, okay, so if I get him that, that is quality time with him and me. Like, buy the new wrestling game and we do wrestling matches. Like, he's only going to get better at playing games. Even if he's too young now, but come dead of winter. Oh, my God. All right, Nerds community, I have a question for you. Please go to Marcus's section of the Discord and answer this. And the question is, at what age is it going to be official that Marcus's son is better at video games than he is? Six. I'm going <laughs> to start at seven years old. 
<laughs> well, anyway, anyways, I was gonna say now. You're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, where's now. that? Where's that sound bar that said I was ass? Oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. This, this is this is, is gonna this is this is, this is this gonna is be Ryan. Young <laughs> Ryan next year when he gets his PS5. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, That's literally what I would hear in Modern Warfare Two lobbies. Oh, it's dude, like, I will say that, like, what game was I playing? CS2. It's Counter-Strike, lo- Dude, it's it, Counter-Strike 2 lobbies are Modern Warfare 2 lobbies. You'll get in there, a guy will be on the mic going, yum, 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 yum. These chips are delicious. And somebody's like, dude, will you shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's the best. Anyways, uh, Doritos asks. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. All right. So we're going back to the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the worst Halloween candy you ever got? I have the worst candy to get ever. So I'm going to go last. Okay. Um, I think one year somebody gave out like caramel apples. And I thought that was the lamest fucking thing ever. Or like. Bags of pretzels. Fuck that. The bags of pretzels are amazing. You take that back. No. Like, I, when I was a little kid and you got pretzels, I, I basically threw it away. It was oh, like, I loved it. Get out of here. Like, pretzels, you can have any time. You only had your Halloween candy stash for, for, like, that was special. That was candy you could have. That was yours. Like, I remember as a little kid, I remember keeping my stash for, like, a year and eating it slowly. And I'd have it in, like, a special, like, tucked under my bed like it was secret. Mom would be like, "Oh, just throw that away. It's been it's the candies are bad by this point." I'm like, "No, my precious stash." Even mm-hmm. if I didn't actually eat it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, candy or do or the candy or do not do the candy. Don't try with pretzels or freaking caramel apples or whatever. But uh, the worst candy for me is Twizzlers. I can see that. Uh, yeah, Twizzlers it's are such not, a not shitty great. candy. I've got yeah. the pistachio of candy. Okay. Oh Let's boy. Ready? And this is this is not just Halloween. This is if you ever give this candy to anyone, it's clear that you hate them. <laughs> okay. If you give someone a package of circus peanuts, piss oh, off. Yeah. Those are terrible. Those are the most disgusting <laughs> candy. Uh, yeah. Ever. No, 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 no push. Yeah, at least here. give people candy cigarettes. Something. R- like something, Anything. man. I'd rather Anything. Get... I'd rather get cough drops. I'd rather, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Circus too. peanuts, man. I would too. I would, too. I'd ra- I would rather, I would rather cough drops and I'd rather, like, I hate cherry flavor. Like, I hate artificial cherry, but I'd rather artificial cherry cough drops than circus peanuts. Those Peanuts's are terrible. Artificial grape. I don't like artificial grape. TK four two sevens like that artificial grape. It's like anything. I'm out. It's weird. I like grape though. Um, Marcus, you good? Yeah, my keyboard isn't working. <laughs> Sylvie asks our last question. No, no, no. Scarlet. We just oh, asked yeah, that, true. didn't we? No, no. no I before. thought we did. My bad. Well, anywho, Scarlet asks. How much dad tax, looking at you, Marcus, uh, on Halloween candy do you charge per child? Like you steal a candy or two. I just fucking eat whatever I want, and oh, they can oh. fuck off. Well, there you go. <laughs> I protect you for the record, whole time. Is, just for the record, I was dressed up as Buzz Lightyear this year. He did the chicken dance, too. That's in the clips section. Oh, my God, Discord. dude. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> We should get that as a Discord sound. Um, yes, we should. All right, A tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Who's our last question from? Sovi and Sovi asks, "Did you hear? Oh, I forgot. Sorry. Go ahead, do it again. Here we go. Did you hear that Shore came out with a new version of the SM7 BD? I did yeah, not. So- so it's called the Shure SM, the Shure SM7 DB. Shure SM7 okay. Playboy. It's um, so basically what they've done is so this microphone is 
the is a essentially high quality mic for mid range money. You know, there's mics that are we Nick and I looked at a two thousand dollar mic from Audio Technica. Yep. And I was like, what the fuck? Like that's just out of the realm. But yeah. if you're doing studio shit, but believe it or not, this mic that I'm using, the SM7B, is the most used mic in recording studios across the world. You yeah. know, Michael Jackson recorded his Thriller album on the Shure SM7, which you can still find those microphones that are still working to this day wow. in uh, on eBay and stuff. But so the difference is, so the Shure SM7B is a... Uh, is the standard mic. It's 400 bucks. The new mic has a built-in uh, power source because this mic has to be powered. So whether if your mixer has the phantom power or you have to buy a cloud lifter to power the mic for the gain so you can actually hear yourself talking in it. Um, The new microphone, which it's an extra $100, comes with built-in phantom power so you don't need that extra component so if you buy a cloud lifter a cloud lifter is 120 bucks it's better to buy the other mic but right. there's other brands that have phantom power that you can get as low as 50 bucks so it just really comes down to what are you looking for in your microphone there it is you know if i was going back in time in the Wayback Machine, I would probably buy the new one just because it's you buy it once and it's plug and play. No matter what, you just turn on the uh, the phantom power and your mic is done. It's one less step that you need to power. Makes sense. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, for submitting the questions. This was an awesome topic this week. Uh, next week, we will be doing more. And stay awesome. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working Class Nerds. Nerds.